So I would highly recommend anybody going to Alaska if you have, you know, a compact car. I wouldn't even think about taking it up there, not just because of the weather, but just because you're going to be hiking. You're going to be driving to these remote places that you necessarily can't get to in a car. I mean, I um, again, I bought a car when I got up there and it, it is an SUV. So when I thought about like the mileage on my car and how I would road trip up there and who would come with me and all of those different things, I was like, okay, this is a little bit too daunting. So why don't I just get there first and then figure out the rest? But when I got there, I didn't have a car. And so (laughs) I had to figure that out. Um, But yeah, I had four suitcases and I got an Uber from the airport and I got to my apartment. And I actually moved when I was there. So my first apartment that I was in, I moved to a different apartment. But whenever I was trying to get a car, I actually was walking everywhere. Um, oh and my gosh. yeah, and it was so it was gore. I mean, I was walking down, you know, downtown Anchorage and you turn around and there's mountains to your right and there's ocean to your left and you're like, where am I? And then there's a city <laughs> in the middle and it was just like some of the most amazing views and I was like, all right, I can just sit here and some people think, okay, well, maybe it's like a barren wasteland. No, I sat at a Starbucks and stared at the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so it sounds like you ended up purchasing a car there. But if people are wondering, there is Uber in Alaska. I'm guessing since you're in Anchorage, that probably helped, right? Yeah, it is limited. Um, I would recommend, especially, we did have um, a friend up there who didn't have a car, and it was really difficult for him because he lived on kind of the opposite side of the city, so somebody had to come get him. And the public transportation isn't as reliable. There are buses. Um, Primarily, the homeless population use the public transportation. It's just not as accessible to, you know, working because it doesn't go through specific, like near my school that I worked in, or Mm -hmm. if you want to get, you know, farther out in the city, or if you want to go to another city, there isn't really interconnecting transportation. So that's a little bit difficult, difficult. Okay. But you did buy a car. So did you go to a dealership or how did you go about doing that? I did. I went to multiple dealerships. So it was actually funny because it was like a strip and I was like, okay, well, I'll just like dealership hop. So I kind (laughs) of just like walked down the street and I wanted a used car because I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. I didn't know if I was going to keep it after I was done with Alaska. They do say that you can rent cars. However, everybody has to keep in mind, especially in the summer months and when school is starting, that rentals are so high. So the price is extremely high for rentals because everybody has them and everybody Mm -hmm. wants them. So if you are going to rent a car for just, you know, of the first few weeks that you're there, okay. But continuing that through like a longer contract, even a few months, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, You could buy a used car and then sell it back for cheaper than you would be renting. Um, So I just went to each dealership and then I actually went to a used dealership and I bought my car there. Um, and they were really, really helpful. They were able to, that was my first time buying my car. So (laughs) on top of moving to Alaska, I bought my first car. Um, and they were really great with walking me through the whole process. I really didn't feel like I was, you know, especially being a younger woman, I didn't feel like they were taking advantage of me in any way. I'd really felt safe and comfortable. Um, it was pay less auto. Um, And it is right in downtown Anchorage. And they have, you know, high line cars. It's not just junkers that people don't want anymore. And that's another thing I was concerned about. And so in talking with him, he really helped me narrow down what I wanted out of a car and what um, was best for Alaska. I think that that's really important as well. Like even moving from California to Colorado, I honestly had had the same car for 15 years, like drove the same car when I got 15 till I was 30. And, um, but then moving to Colorado, it's like my 95 Toyota Celica (laughs) is not going to hold up. Also, you have to think about like four wheel drive and like, like different types of tires and all those kinds of things. So were you prepared to, I guess, to ask those kinds of questions when you got there or were the people at the dealership really helpful in, um, I guess, helping you navigate those types of questions? 
So I had a few questions, but really when you go there, there's so much information that you don't even think about. When I mean, we think about, especially in the lower 48, we use snow tires in the winter. Okay, that's fine. You switch out your summer tires and you get snow tires. But when you go to Alaska, they have studded tires, Mm. which are legal. And they used to be legal in some parts of the lower 48, but because of the roadways and because of how they wreak havoc on the roads, they aren't. Now, In Alaska, I would recommend them or I would recommend getting really high line snow tires. Um, Some of my friends had snow tires and some of them had studded tires. I only had snow tires and I was able to manage, although I did slide off the road only twice (laughs) when I was there. But um, it was, (laughs) but it was, um, in areas that were highly, highly like icy or snowy whenever we would go, you know, on a hike. So if you're just planning on traveling within the city or, you know, just a little bit outside the city and not doing really any like back road driving, then I think that you would be okay without studded tires. And that is something that the dealership was able to help me decide because I was like, studded tires, what is that? I've never even heard of that. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's not even something I would think about, like studded tires. No. I, no. Yeah. So this no. is great. No. <laughs> oh man. Well, let me ask you this. Okay. So I feel like a lot of the things that I have read is that, I mean, I guess maybe Anchorage is a little bit different because it is more of a primary city um, or like a larger city, if you would call it a larger city. Um, but I know that a lot of the time people will um, get a lot of their tra- transportation like from more local planes. Uh, did you ever have to do that? Or were you, I guess in the area that you were in, you didn't really have to focus on that kind of thing. So that, um, Alaska's, Alaskans call it the bush. Um, so whenever (laughs) you do, whenever you would take a plane, um, I know that some of the school districts, especially because Anchorage is such a big city. And when you think of a school district, especially for me right now being in Baltimore, like I think of, okay, well I'm in Baltimore city school district and it's like inner city Baltimore. And then you have like Baltimore County, which is just like right outside Baltimore. No, Anchorage stretches from like an hour north of Anchorage to an hour south of Anchorage because there's not an available school district to service those kiddos, you know, in the, um, like in South um, of Anchorage. And so we were able to, luckily, I was able to have a school that was right in downtown. So I didn't have to think about that. But there are school districts um, that are in the bush and you do have to take a bush plane. There are different kinds of bush planes, which I found fascinating. (laughs) Um, I really loved the ones that are like the water planes. And so they would be obviously, I don't know if... um, Anybody is familiar with those, but they have like the feet on the bottom that they would land in the water or they could land like on the, uh, on this landing strip. And we were driving out, you know, a little bit out of downtown Anchorage and we went, we looked to the side and we went, what's that really big tower? It looks like a prison almost. (laughs) No, it was an airport for all of the bush planes. And then there was another one that was right next to my school. So we actually like, when you looked out the window, it was the mountains and it was the airport. And so (laughs) there were all these little bush planes that were flying out there. I did, um, I was able to do a flight seeing tour, which does take those little planes. And it was just me and the pilot. And I went and I actually flew over Denali, which was an incredibly amazing, unbelievable experience. And I think that honestly, it's worth the money. If you are really debating on what you want to spend your money on going out there, I would say that you want to do a flight seeing tour over just the Alaska range in general. It was gorgeous. 